good morning all of you with new topic especially for the for the learners what is a rap and what rap stand for rap stand for retrograde autologous priming this is one of the best blood conservation technique where we try to avoid blood transfusion during the bypass so we need to know why we need to do the rap and in which case you need to do the rap and in which patients you can do the rap or which patient is not fit to do the rap so first of all rap is a blood conservation technique and in this we try to avoid blood transfusion number one number two the patients having hematocrit less than 35 pre bypass so patient is anemic in some parodism get bleed or something happen number 3 the patient's selection criteria mostly we used to do the rap in coronary artery bypass grafting or valvular cases grafting or coronary bypass plus valvular cases this is our criteria normally we used to do the rap so what which type of the patient in which condition we avoid to do the rap number one the patients who came for emergency cases urgent patients ejection flag ejection fractions is below than 30 percent patients having some history of the stroke or something like that so should avoid to do the rap uh, before doing the rap this is humble advice always be in touch and having very effective communication between surgeon cardiac anesthetist and perfusionist so the three pillar of the cardiac surgery is be prior to do any procedure we need to discuss and come up with the proper outcome and all three should be in a same page so from the anesthesia side of course you require the blood pressure not below than 90 systolic at least so always during your rap your systolic pressure should be above than 90 mm per mercury uh number 2 of course to keep your pressure on a higher side because the time of rap there is a chance of hypovolemic and it going to be the pressure going to be in a hypotension so always the, from anesthesia side they will going to use noradrenaline or phenylephrine the spolus of the small of the phenylephrine to keep the systolic pressure more than 90 mm per mercury uh, the time after heparinize the patients the both cannula should insert it like when aortic cannula and the venous cannula almish already should be placed in uh, appropriate places and your act is almost like 300 and above seconds just try to avoid cell saver because you need to take all the crystallite out from the your tubings so in a rap we categorize rap in three stages your first stage is to remove the crystallite uh, volume from the arterial tube and this is called the displacement of the volume from the arterial cannula number 2 the number 2 is your displacement of the crystal volume from the venous side and number 3 stage is the displacement displacement of the crystal volume from reservoir in between the tubes oxygenators and we going to replace all this crystallite with the your patient son blood autologous blood so these are the three stages so we'll talk about the first stage patient heparinized both patient both cannulas inserted by the cardiac surgeon patient is ready for bypass but prior to bypass first what you did normally as the surgeon after cannulating he put a clamp on the arterial side even from your side you put a clamp on the arterial side great you need a empty bag at least 1 liter empty bag which will be going to connect it in between the your research line there in from oxygenator to reservoir there is a priming line is called the recirculation line so in between there was a three way and from the three way just hook your empty bag so the time 
you are going to release the arterial cannula the volume will going to uh, replace retrogradely from aorta toward your tubings and it will going to replace your crystallite with the blood so till the blood reach to the level of the your tubes and then clamped from there so the one uh, almost you will going to get in adult cases around 100 to 150 ml of the volume from 100 and 120 mls volume from uh, the arterial side number 2 after doing the arterial wrap then the second stage will be the venous side so from the venous side of course your reservoir is empty but your your line is filled with your uh, with the crystallite so with the slowly just remove your venous cam- cannula so that the volume which is from the venous side is the blood is replacing the crystallite and when keep open till it reach to the level of the reservoir uh, the cardiotum reservoir connection so the clamp there and you will get around uh, around oh, 200 to 250 ml volume from the venous side so now your crystallite which is present in the venous side you just fill it and it was replaced with the blood so now your third stage will come up so third stage is the crystallite which is present now in the reservoir in the oxygenator and in between tubes so what you have to do first of all normally we always put a level sensor so here you need to override your level sensor you have to override your bubble sensor and with the slow and tidy way just push your rollers main pump slowly and open your the bag which is connected in between the recirc line so you replace all the crystallite from the tube in the that empty bag so you will get around something like a 6 to 700 of volume from the uh, your priming uh, circuit so if your prime priming volume of the patient of your circuit is like a liter or, or 1200 so almost 50% crystallite is deduct and it was replaced with the patient's own blood i think this is one of the best technique where you can avoid to give uh, extra uh, blood uh, to the patients and avoid so many uh, uh, happenings like uh, massive uh, transfusions and avoid to transfuse blood uh, patients uh, avoid to, uh, to transfuse to the patients so with the patient's own blood you can run a pump in a safe and secure manner and keep hematocrit above than 25% during bypass and i think this is one of the best technique and you all need to apply and safe to avoid blood transfusion during the bypass so general consideration during the wrap is and the wrap volume should be in between 5 to 700 you need to remove from the, during the wrap you are removing and almost like a 50 to 70% the crystallite was removed from the circuit it is one of the best thing number 2 the pump sucker should be switch off in the time of your arterial uh displacement of the volume and for the venous displacement of the volume number 3 your ac should be your act should be more than 480 second or uh, it's up to your protocol how much is you recommend it to initiate bypass i think it's more than 450 second is okay and should be more than 450 second uh, the wrap should be discontinued is very important part here the wrap should be discontinued if the patient systolic pressure is below than 90 mm per mercury number 1 if the patient lost more than the usual blood volume during the cannulation or in a cell cell was not used so, so no need to of course you already get a, a huge amount of volume in your reservoir so replacing that is also not a good thing so if there is a massive bleeding started or the time of the cannulation anything disaster happened just stop the doing the wrap number 3 if your patient is unstable if your patient is not stable please avoid to do the wrap and just discontinue the wrap and go back with a normal phenomena so this is one of the best way to do the wrap